Welcome to the 18th video on Microsoft Surface and Windows 8. In this video, I'm going to show you the Kindle. Um, and just like all other applications that we've taken a look at, that starts by going to the, the Microsoft Store, downloading the Kindle app, which I've already done, um, and then starting it up. Now, if you're not familiar with it, Kindle is Amazon's e-reader. And so in order to use this um, service, you, you do need to have an account with, with Amazon. Um, I actually have a Kindle. It's a device Amazon creates. And so I already had an account set up and already had a number of books downloaded um, to the service, um, but was very happy to sort of see that there was a, a fairly good um, version of the application for the Surface as well, so that I can, I can read books on, on this device. Device. And so the very first screen that it's showing here is basically um, a list of all the books I've purchased. Now you'll sort of notice that some of these um, have sort of an older style to it. These are actually free. Um, a lot of books that have gone past their, their copyright date are actually available for free. And so if you are looking for, for something to read and you like classics, that's something to watch for. I had um, accidentally bought a couple of these in paperback edition, not realizing that you could get them online for free um, just because they've passed their copyright date. So that's sort of a cool thing. Um, but the other books here at the beginning, these are ones that, that I've, I've purchased and I'm either reading or have recently read. Um, now the, the page one right now is showing the cloud. Um, so the things I've purchased that are available for me to, to read. Um, what you do want to be careful though is you're obviously probably going to be reading when you don't have a connection. Um, so you do want to make sure that you have some of your books loaded to the device. And that's the difference between these two menus here, cloud and device. So cloud is everything you have access to, device is what's on your device. So let's say that I also knew that I wanted to read um, The Real Crash again. So I can pick that one and then you can sort of see I can open it or I can download it. Um, so you'd want to pick the download book it will basically go bring that across the network to your device and then it will be available um, even if you're not on your, your device. And so you can pick a whole bunch of them and do them at the same time. Um, you can see there's also a cancel option there, but I'll, I'll let this one continue. Um, eventually what it will do is it will show up on, um, on the device page here. So we'll come back to that. Now the other thing you can do, um, I've ordered a lot of my books on my um, desktop machine. Whatever device you, you ordered on, it's going to show up on all of your, your Kindle applications. Um, you can also, of course, go into the Kindle Store, which is an application on the Surface, and then you can search for whatever books you want. Um, it has some recommendations here for me. It's a little strange. I've never quite figured out um, how it picks the books. Um, one thing that also makes it a little tough is, is that my fiance does use this once in a while, so it recommends romance books for me occasionally. Um, but it's, it does have their complete, um, their, all their books are there. You can do the search. I won't show you any more of that feature right now because more I want to show you how the, 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 the Kindle reader works. Um, you can see though now, Real Crash is, a, is available, um, and so you can read it offline. Now the book I'm currently working on is Oracle Bones, um, so we'll pull this one up. And when I'm reading this on the train or something, of course I have this in, in, um, in what do they call that, not landscape, portrait mode, so holding it the other way, but just so that my hands are free for the, the demo here, I'm keeping it on the table with the, with the keyboard out. Um, but you can sort of see it's it's just like the real Kindle. Um, you can tap on the the edge here to move forward, um, tap on the other side to move back, and you can just move through. Um, there is sometimes a little bit of caching, but once you start getting into the forward progress, um, you'll notice that it it moves pretty pretty well, pretty fast. Um, Surface, of course, has a backlit screen, so this is great for reading in the dark. Um, I do see a little bit of glare when I'm reading on the subway because there are pretty bright lights above me. And so actually on the subway, I do prefer the, the normal Kindle just because it doesn't have the, the glare. Um, but in other cases, this has been, has been really good and really usable. I find absolutely no problem holding it in one hand. It doesn't seem too heavy at all for that, and so pretty cool. Um, now, of course, like everything else, they do have menu options. Um, library takes us back to the screen we were at before. Um, view, you can change the, the font. So let's say that I couldn't read it, um, that I needed a bigger font. You can see it sort of has the middle one right there. Well, I can make it huge. 
when you apply settings, take a second, but taking more of a second than I than it usually does. But you can see here now it's very large print. Um, so I would never probably read it in that one, but um, just wanted to sort of show you an extreme option. Um, you can also control how much um, white space there is around it. So I've turned it off completely. And then if you're finding the black on white um, tough to read, you can also change the background. Um, and now it's going to be white on, on black print. So maybe you find this easier to, easier to read. So sort of nice that you have that preference. You obviously don't have that on the, on the, the normal Kindle reader because it's always um, black on white, but it's, it is a, is more of a papery look to it on the, the real Kindle. So those are a couple of options you can set there. Um, the other thing that I actually like is the ability to do um, notes and marks. And so if you pick a word here, um, you can, oh, I, so pick a word, you can see the, the highlighting markers come up. And I clicked on the wrong part. Oh, this is my fault, I'm being impatient. So you can see it gives me a definition right away, but what you might wanna do is extend it and sort of mark that you have a, that you have a series of, of text here that you wanna remember. So you can, you can highlight it, make a note on it, um, so you can sort of put in a note and say, um, look up more information on this topic and then save it off. So I do this quite a bit. I'll read like nonfiction books and then have sections that I'm reading on the train and I want to do something else with it. This is the way that you can sort of um, pull it up and then you can click on the note thing to see what you what you typed, delete it if you're done with the note, whatever. And it saves this all um, to the to the cloud um, so that so that you can you can see it on all of your devices. And I think there's a way to yeah, so if you want to you can also delete the highlight. Now the other thing that you want to do if you have multiple devices, if you hit the sync button here, it will actually allow you to go to the furthest page. And so this is a feature that's really nice because I am reading this on my, on my actual Kindle device and I've gotten quite a bit further. So if I hit go to the furthest page, it will now move me to the page that I'm reading in the, in the, the Kindle device and the reverse will also work. You have to have all the devices hooked up to, hooked up to the, the wire or yeah, to the, your network. Um, but even the phone, the Windows phone has a Kindle device as well. And so I can read on any one of my devices and this sync feature will, will help me keep updated. You just have to make sure that you have synced the device you just read um, before you move to the other one. And because if it doesn't, it doesn't, the cloud doesn't know which, which section you're on. Um, i trying to think of some other things here. So location, you can drag back and forth to sort of indicate where you are. You can see I'm about halfway done this book. You can also use go to um, to sort of say where you want to go to. Now, with a paper book, it's pretty easy to say which page you want to go to. In the Kindle, they have something called a location, which is a, a numeric value that um, will uniquely identify a section no matter what font you have in it. And so that's the useful thing to remember. If you're, if you're ever having to manually move to a section, you want to take a look at the location that you're at. Um, so I'm at 4409 on this book right now. So you could type that in if you go to another device. Um, and the only other thing I was going to show you is all the Kindle devices also have a way of, um, of, I don't know if it's showing up here. Oh, I was going to show you, but it looks like it didn't actually sync down. Let's, let me try that. So the Kindle device, you can also send PDF documents to it. Um, and then the PDF documents can be, can be read. Now, I don't know if they just don't support it on the, the Kindle app for Windows or if there's just a sync issue. Because um, I just uploaded a PDF, a test PDF um, to, to the cloud. And I was going to show it to you here, um, definitely on my Kindle device. It, it shows that as one of the options. Then you can just download it and read it. Um, but I'm not seeing it, so I'll have to I'll have to go take a look. It could be that they just haven't supported this yet. Um, personal documents on on um, on the Kindle app for Windows. So hopefully that's something that they'll they'll add a feature to. Um, 
And actually, I haven't even checked this. Let's see what settings they have. Um, so they have my account. They say that's Amazon Mobile, contact us. So not a whole lot there um, for the settings. So it looks like everything is available um, from the bottom swipe menu um, or from the top if you, if you want to set up anything there. So that's it, Kindle app. Um, I really like it if you, if you do use the Kindle. Um, it's definitely worth downloading. It's a free app and seems to work very well. That's it for this video. I'll post another one in a couple weeks on another topic.